What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty. And right now, I am sitting down with Kareem Biggs-Burke. And if you don't know who that is, you've been under a rock, which is a great way to introduce the guy that started <laughs> off with Rockefeller and Rockaway. Black excellence. We hear it used all the time, but yeah. do you have a definition for I don't, I black don't, excellence? For me, is open up the doors for the other people in the, in the culture, right? For, for the minorities, right? So yeah. we're talking about black, Latinos, or whatever it is. But for me, is um, helping others be successful that come from the same place as us. Right now, I see a lot of people using it, and I love that because it's just showing camaraderie now. But then the next stage of that is how do we get together and really be an agent of change? Growing up where I come from, everyone thinks that if you rap, you mm -hmm. dribble a ball or you catch a ball. Exactly. If they're not introduced to the possibility, they don't know they could do it. We could make it hooping, we could make it balling, we could yeah. make it um, rapping. But like, there's not a lot of people that they could see in tech. And animation, mm -hmm. you no know, films, like and there's a, a handful of them, and we yeah. celebrate them, but there should be more than a handful. Well, definitely. And th the more I'm getting into these different fields, I'm trying to open the doors for others too and let it be known. So I'm not trying to hold back or hold the knowledge back. You know, as I'm learning or as I'm progressing, I'm always trying to put something out there. As someone starting a business, would you say to them to focus on their one audience at first, or do you try to reach um, multiple I audiences I at once? I would say focus on one audience first. You yeah. Know? I mean, I, I, the luxury that I have is to being able to do multiple things, you know, because I've built a, a lifestyle and a brand over 20-plus years. So now if I can introduce quality with that movement, whatever it is, whether it's design, whether it's fashion, whether it's film, uh, people are going to buy in because they, they have something that they've been a part of for a long time. And they trust you. Exactly. And they trust what you're yeah. delivering with yeah. that. So I just can't compromise integrity of my brand and just make sure I'm staying true to whatever it is that I'm, I'm releasing. But at the same time, it has to be quality. For me, it's tough. Like when you say that core audience, like mm -hmm. coming from football, you have this one audience, but they don't really transition it to the arts. Mm. the way that you would want. So that audience, like building an audience of your life for the last 15 years, college football, where you're popular mm. growing up. Mm. Like once you leave that sport, that audience doesn't really come with you. They stay back in that sporting world or they keep you in their mind in that as an athlete. And once you start introducing the other things, it's not that doesn't have to do with the sport. They don't really trust your yeah. taste and brand with that because mm. that's not where they came for the first time. Yeah. So I find it hard to like build a new audience. I see what you're saying. But yeah. For, lucky for us, we did that early on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So launching the first album, Reasonable Doubt. Yeah. Right? By the time we got to our third album, we had a clothing line, right? By yeah. the time we got to the fourth album, we already had a liquor company. So people started seeing us as a lifestyle brand with music at the core. Probably Jay is the only artist that's hip-hop that's done it uh, so far is being able to be that consistent from you know early on to where he's at now yeah and people still traveling with him and still having some relevancy and you think that you comes I mean? from so, diversification early on yeah definitely and well and being a great that he is yeah yeah but you know because if, if you look at the other artists that we came around a lot of they were outselling us by millions of records right yeah i mean ja came up and then there was dmx's and there was this and all these other people and ludicrous and it's always selling more we was doing our two three million two three million two three million you know we wasn't a hot sound. we just kept flying straight yeah and all these people doing this and then now everybody's drop fell to the side can't even come back you yeah know what I'm saying? But so uh, he's still relevant still going you know so how do y'all not panic in that mm -hmm. time when like there are people moving more like you because you want to get your numbers up like yeah. you want to make more money if like the sales are mm -hmm. not there what makes you, what's that conversation like to focus and just like hey mm -hmm. we're in the right pocket like mm -hmm. this is what we need to be doing because i think what, what we did is what we knew we can do right we didn't step outside of that so jay never act right he was never put in a film he knows yeah. that's not what he, he he can't do that right yeah. he wasn't alongside Steven Seagal breaking somebody's leg or something like, like that. A lot of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of times people try to chase those bags and do something different, but they compromise that, right? But so, you know, you don't want to see this guy who's looking like, oh, yeah, this is the tough guy from the block with the dog chains. Oh, he just did a fly kick, and hit, you know what I mean? Him and Jet Lee just kicked somebody off the yeah. helicopter. Like, you don't want to see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now it just takes away from the aura and what they're trying to build and what you bought into. I get it, cause like the same mm -hmm. thing with me. Like I stay true to myself the entire mm -hmm. time. Like mm -hmm. I've been a creative yeah. since the beginning. Even when I play sports, I never shied away from the fact that I'm create creative. And I think now that I'm retired, I'm having more success as a creative than I ever had as a player. Mm -hmm. We talk <laughs> about the football players a lot too, like athletes in uh, in general. And it's funny because like the basketball players as a whole probably get more notoriety and more famous. Baseball players definitely not 
one because I, you know, least watch. And then yeah. football players, they wear helmets all day. So you don't really know who they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the general public. Like if they're outside this and that, they can't get in the club or whatever it is. Like, yo, who is that? Yeah, they don't you know. know. I mean? They don't recognize so you. So they end up buying a bunch of jewelry or doing this and that. Yeah. and starting to look like, oh, yeah, so they can, you know, have yeah. that, you know, that persona or that, you know, so they could go in and, and, and appear to be something else. Mike or LeBron? Uh, LeBron. Yeah, why? I think at what he's doing right now at this level uh, is, is just amazing. You know what I mean? Obviously, they – Mike was great, and he's rated on those six chips. I don't think LeBron has to get the chips. I think what he's doing is just amazing, going playoffs with eight years in a row. You know, the numbers that he's putting up, what he's doing in the finals, what, you know, he's, yeah, I think he got the edge. You could never say it's LeBron's fault. Yeah. Like, that's, and that's hard yeah. in a, as a basketball player. There's yeah. other people, like, in the game, you could be like, mm-hmm. Man, they lost that game because such and such didn't show up yeah. tonight or yeah, exactly. he had an off night. Like, LeBron yeah. does not have off nights. I think yeah. Kobe and Jordan makes more sense as yeah. a way that they style what, of play. What's surprising me, though, because Kobe's, like, fresh out of the game. Yeah. There's not a lot of talk about Kobe no more. Like, this guy just left. Oh, that is very true. You know what I'm saying? Like, they still like, debate. You know, when Mike left, right, we still talk about Mike, 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 right? Yeah. And then once Kobe left, it wasn't LeBron, Kobe no more. It was like... LeBron, Mike, LeBron, Mike, LeBron, Mike. And That's an excellent point. And then now, like, even when you talk to kids or whatever, like, you don't hear the Kobe conversations about anything. How do you find the story that you want to tell and keep it authentic and do the right collaborations that are still authentic to you and what you're trying to build? Well, I could just talk about me. What, yeah. What, yeah, what we did. I mean, we just didn't step outside the box. And if it's something that, di- that didn't feel right or we thought it didn't make sense, we just didn't do it. How'd you define the box? Like, what was in the, like, these are the things that's in the box. You know, it would be certain brands that would come to Jay to ask to do commercials, right? Yeah. And stuff like that. And he's just like, look, that don't make sense. So it wasn't, a, it was never about the money. Yeah. You know, like, he's turned down so much money. At the same time, you got to know who you are. And, you know, and if you're just chasing the bag, right? Everybody's chasing the bag, the bag. So I'm like, so is the bag defining who you are or are you defining who you are? You yeah. Know? So a lot of times people leave that, you know, and then that's where you, you can see that authenticity start to being diluted. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, do I really believe this person or want to be a part of this, you know? When you hire people, is there, like, certain characteristics that you look to? Cause work ethic. But how can you just know well, someone's work ethic when... Well, I mean, it won't be after one meeting, you know? Yeah. So it'll be a due diligence process. It'll be probably several meetings and then getting to know that person. Yeah. At this point in the stage, I don't really do business with people I don't want to be in relationship with. I yeah. agree. I don't. Yeah. If I don't want to have you, I don't want to have come to your barbecue, or I don't want you yeah, at my exactly. barbecue. I ain't fucking with you. Yeah, exactly. And I don't fuck with people who haven't. If you haven't read a book in two months, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Audio books don't count. Audio books count, but you gotta be bringing some type of information <laughs> to dinner, right? Like, because if you're yeah. not like. Mm-hmm. Or if, you, if you're not reading, you better be out there living the most craziest life. Like, mm-hmm. I just got back from India. Yeah. I just got back from Africa. Or they might be a sponge, listen, you know, sitting on learning from other people or on some other mentors. Yeah, as long as they have information yeah, yeah, yeah. to contribute to uh-huh. the dinner table. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear about what the Kardashians are doing. I don't give yeah. a shit about that. Mm-hmm. They ain't pushing me toward my dreams. Yeah. I'm looking for information. For me, information is currency. Yeah. And I think people pay for information. Stimulate like, your intellect. Yeah, and I'm, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I can't be... I was in the locker room for several years, and I didn't yeah. get any of that. So especially, <laughs> it's like, why don't you, like, like, not mm-hmm. that all athletes are dumb or whatever, mm-hmm. anything like that. It's just that, like, the conversations we had were not conversations of what I was trying to grow, the areas yeah. I was trying to grow nothing in. of substance. Yeah, nothing of substance to yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's and I, mean. I think I try mm-hmm. not to have people who don't mm-hmm. bring substance to my yeah. life around me. So you like other creatives? I love creatives. I love even business people. Like most mm-hmm. of my most of my friends are geeks. I think mm-hmm. that we build a bubble around ourselves to stay mm-hmm. with people who are so much like us yeah. that we miss out on things that mm-hmm. we never took a chance on. Yeah, a so, lot of people are scared to take chance and they scared to change. I heard Mark Cuban one time on um, Shark Tank and he was like, and they were all talking and, and someone was like, this guy, you want to talk to a guy that doesn't even wear a watch? Mark said, why would I need a watch? I work for me. Everyone who works for me wears watches. Yeah. I get there when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ever since then, I was like, shit, yeah. <laughs> I ain't wearing no watch. Yeah. I, I, it made so much sense to yeah. me. He's like, yeah. well, I don't need to get anywhere at any time. Like, I get there when I get there. Yeah. I mean, and that's like, man, I'm the boss. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I wear a watch. I set the time. Like, someone say to me, it's at 8.30 now. Let's make it at 8.45. Mm-hmm. Everybody else pushed their shit back today. I'm yeah. getting No, I'm actually the opposite. <laughs> I, I, I try to get everywhere early. I get everywhere early, too. yeah. My, I got that. I'm real conscious of people time. Too. My wife is um, 
half white. Mm-hmm. So I got I adopted that half white side of being punctual. Oh very yeah, quickly. that's where it come from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, one time I was about to start hustling players because I realized like mm-hmm. every player wanted to have their website after their name. So I was just gonna go buy all the top <laughs> top players in college. Yeah. Buy their names on their website, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, whatever, whoever the top quarterback coming in mm-hmm. this year, I have it out on his website, dot com, dot net, dot everything. Yeah. And I'll turn them to porn sites. So <laughs> then he would be forced. Yeah. To buy- <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get rich, you start yeah. taking bubble baths. Yeah. And I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I got a little bit of money. I remember when my mom used to put some dishwashing liquid in the bathtub yeah, and make 100%. the bubbles out the of shampoo. Yeah, the shampoo. Sometimes yeah. I still do this with my daughter's shampoo if it smells good yeah. and I know it's <laughs> I know it's safe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I can't touch my wife's shit. Taking a bubble bath, man, I'm sitting there one day nigga, smoking a blunt in a bubble bath, nigga, and eating a slice of cake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I took a second, I was like, nigga, I made it.